I think you know everyone's read about already. Just amazing, um, right up there. I think uh, I doubt there's been a better one. Um, you know, in terms of the conditions, the the length and of, of the second innings to be able to stick out that long out there was yeah, just, yeah, just an amazing effort by all all the players. Yeah. Yeah, but same same thing. You know, my role is trying to prepare the players that we've you've given it away that are selected to prepare to you know perform as well as they can for Australia. And and I think yeah, you know, you're spot on. You're missing two two great players that are you know forty odd Test hundreds between them. So it, it's a different role, I suppose, in terms of that you've got great established players where suddenly you've got people making their debuts, and it's you know it's more about them believing in what they do is good enough to have got them here and, and try and get them comfortable in the environment and, and make them believe that they can perform here. So yeah, definitely a little bit of a shift, but still going about just trying to get the best out of the players to perform for Australia. I think there's definitely been a big shift in the way players and batters are going about their, uh, I suppose, their first class cricket now. And I think this, that is one, one Big difference, I think. You know, if you if you I suppose if you're averaging 35 rather than 45, it means you, you're spending a lot less time out in the middle. And I think, you know, we all know that the best place to learn is out in the middle. So, you know, at, at state level or club level, where it is, where, wherever you're playing, you know, the best place to learn is is out in the middle. So don't waste those opportunities because as you come up, like I suppose in Test cricket, having to bat for four, five, or six hours. You know, it takes a hell of a lot. So if you don't learn to do that in the earlier systems or the earlier sort of cricket you're playing, then don't expect to do it when you suddenly pitch up in Test cricket. You know? So you know, if you're playing Shield cricket and you've got opportunities to bat all day, try and take it and and, and learn from it. You know, the, the how the, the sort of days or your length of innings how it sort of ebbs and flows through the day. Um, because as I said, if you don't do that there. You try and do it in test cricket for the first time under that pressure and in that environment, you know, like say Uzi did, um, just, it's just not going to happen. So, yeah, so there, there is a difference in, in answering your question. And, you know, maybe those opportunities are wasted at times with the way players are playing a far more, um, let's say, attacking or, or, or aggressive game, you know, these days as they maybe did 15, 20 years ago, or even maybe 10 years ago. I imagine if it comes up in discussion, it won't be a very long one. They've both been playing beautifully. Um, you know, Mitch Marsh has come off um, the A series in, in India. He batted beautifully and got a great hundred there. Spent a lot of time at the crease. He got a, batted for six hours in the warm-up game we had against Pakistan. I played beautifully. So um, I'll be very surprised if it's a very long discussion. To be honest, they're both very good players and playing very well. Just you don't get runs every game. So. In England, he played some, you know, even in the shorter form of the game, he batted in five or six for Somerset in some games and did well. So, yep, definitely. I'll, I'll just say that's, that's another thing that's up to JL, and I didn't see that comment, but there's no reason why not. He's, he's uh, a very talented young player, and um, he's hungry to play, and his game's developing. So, if he fits in somewhere else, great. Right.